I have a list of various projects I want to make. A world clock is one of them. I recently purchased the LED strip which seems perfect for this type of project. So why not give it a go? The world clock does not show the time precisely. It has 5 minutes accuracy. It is called word clock as it displays the current time with words. Representation of time consists of three major components. Representation of minutes. It is optional and it is not display if we are dealing with full hour. Then we have a reference to the hour. Past or to. Either the one that we have just passed or the hour we are heading to. This component is also optional. And then we have the hour we are referring to in the second component. Here are the few examples. There are many different word clocks, differing in sizes and layouts. I'm going for the very basic 8x8 one. We have an 8x8 matrix of letters and among them the all needed time representation elements are hidden. In the top half of the matrix we will find elements for representing minutes. In the middle you will find references past and to and in the lower half you will find all possible hours. Since the matrix is only 8x8, some of the words need to be scattered across single or even multiple rows. If you go for higher size of the clock, you can have all elements as full words as well as you can add some additional components like PM, AM or clock in the evening, in the afternoon, in the morning, at night. The way we build the clock is to use the strip with individually addressable LEDs. Cutting it into strips containing 8 LEDs each and lay them out in this way that each LED highlights one letter. There is a lot of stuff we have to do before we reach that stage. So is there a way for us to do some coding in this video even though the clock device is not yet ready? Actually we can. We can build the string table with time components and write the code that would read time from RTC module and convert it to word representation of that time. We can check if the code works well by outputting the text representation to a serial monitor. Then when we have the clock device ready and we have LEDs properly positioned, then we can change this table that currently has strings representing each time component to having LED assignments instead. Now let's look at the code that we'll use for a dry run. As always we start with library declarations. Here we have a library for RTC module and I2C communication. Next we declare the RTC module, then we declare a couple of variables for storing minutes and hours. In the setup function we open serial monitor, then we initialize the RTC module and set the time to sketch compilation time. In the main loop we read time of the RTC module. We adjust minutes reading to 5 minutes accuracy and save it into minutes variable. If minutes reading is below 35, we assign current hour to hours variable. So when building word representation of time, we can say how many minutes passed since that hour. If the minutes reading is higher than 35, we assign next hour to hours variable. So when building word time representation, we can say how many more minutes are left to reach that next full hour. Current time table is the table that holds pointers to up to four strings in the time comp table that will be used to construct word representation of time. First two pointers are identifying minutes. The second minute component would only be used when minutes reading is 25 as that is the only case when we need two string components to represent minutes. Third pointer is selecting the reference past or to and the fourth pointer is identifying the hour we either just passed or we are heading to. We have a sequence of if statements that based on the value of minutes variable identify which minutes pointers should be selected. So if minutes variable is equal to zero, we have a full hour, so no minutes components are needed. Value 99 indicates that component is not used. When minutes variable is equal to 5, then we assign the value 14 to the first minutes pointer, which identifies string 5. The second minutes pointer is set to 99 as it is not used. We proceed with next possible values of minutes variable.
You see that in case of 25, we use both minutes components. Then, depending on the value of minutes, we select the pointer to either past or to reference to an hour. If minutes value is zero, then no past nor to reference is used. Thus, we assign 99 to that pointer. And finally, we assign pointer to an hour. Please mind that the word clock is 12 hour clock, so we need to convert PM hours, e.g. 1800 to 6, 2300 to 11, etc. Now let's check if our code works well. We would take the four pointers that we got and output the corresponding strings to a serial monitor. First we would output the actual hour and minutes reading from the RTC, followed by the minutes strings, if applicable, reference past and to, if applicable, and then our string. Let's do the ultimate test of the code. Let's connect the RTC to Arduino. Load the code and record 60 minutes of serial monitor output. That should output all possible string combination. That worked perfectly. This is the core code of the word clock. Adjusting it to lit individually controlled LEDs instead of outputting strings would be very simple. Ok, let's leave coding for now. Apart from the technical concept for this project, equally challenging is coming up with its design. I found ideal casing for this clock. It is a thick 30 by 30 cm wooden picture frame. It is like made for this project, at least on paper. I ordered it. The package just arrived. Let's check it out. You see how thick the frame is? Perfect. Next was to come up with a 3D design for the front panel of the clock. I needed to create 8x8 matrix of letters. I started with using the courier font, as this font has all the characters of the same width, making it easy to properly format the matrix. But soon I realized that since I am planning to use the characters as negative space, this font is no good. I had to install special font for CNC laser cutouts. To make sure the layout for this is perfect, I created a grid that helped me make sure that all the letters are positioned properly. The next challenge was that my 3D printer bed is only 20 cm by 20 cm and I would not fit the whole panel onto it. So I had to divide this panel into four separate parts. Since I would most probably be resizing and stretching those parts, I added those bullet objects that would help me align those parts later on. Here is the procedure I followed to create individual part. I cropped out the relevant part of the panel, loaded it to Inkscape, where I would make a vector out of it. Then I loaded that vector into Tinkercad. I am creating the part of the front panel and turning imported letters into negative space. I am also creating thicker border so that the part is not too flexible. I am adding some additional elements that will be used to connect all four parts of the front panel together and also mount the diffusion panel that I will design in the part 2 of this video. The design is finished and we can send it to the 3D printer. This project is by far the most complex project I did to date. I will not be able to fit this into a single video. I will be posting the second part of this video in a week and a half. The draft footage of the work in progress will be available on my Patreon website soon. Today I also posted the new behind the scenes video. So if you want to see it and support my channel at the same time, you are more than welcome to become my patron. I will see you in the part 2 of the World Clock video. Over and out.